What is rain? Every day we toil and struggle as we go along, trying desperately to triumph over sin and wrong. Though we get discouraged and think you can't go on, keep your eyes on things above and keep on keeping on. Keep on, keep on. Looking for the day when we know the battle's over, when we see his face. Until that day he calls us into our new home. Keep your eyes on things above. Yep, keep man. on keeping on. Keep on. Keep on. Tell the story. Keep on. The valley's raging. Keep on keeping on. Keep on.
Ezekiel chapter 22. We received a letter, which we received a lot of emails, 10,000 or more probably, phone calls, different people. <coughs> this one here is from Darius. Received it today. Saturday, October the 31st, 2009 at 11.59 a.m. says, hello. I want you to pay attention to this. I want you to do some thinking. The Bible says that people perish because of lack of knowledge. <coughs> My people perish for a lack of knowledge, God said. This is what um, Darius wrote and says, You have a really strong conviction that King James Version is the only true version of God's Word. That is true. I have a strong conviction. But it's not just a conviction. It's true whether I believe it or not. You know, some people will say, Well, God said it. I agree with it. And that settles it. That's, that's not true. It don't make no difference if you agree with it or not. It's God's Word. Right. God said He spoke the world into existence. It don't make no difference if scientists believe it or not. It makes no difference um, what the evolutionists say. God said it, and that proves it. And that's all that matters. It don't make no difference if man uh, agrees with it. It don't make no difference if man believes it. All that matters is what did God say. It's our final authority in all matters. Yeah. Well, let's keep reading here. It's a sad thing, really. It's a sad thing, she said, that someone would have a conviction that they know what the Word of God is. But this woman, she doesn't know what the Word of God uh, This person, doesn't, man, doesn't know what the Word of God is. We'll, we'll see that in this email. We're not going to read the whole thing, just underline certain things. It says, firstly, the only true, quote, true translation of the Scriptures happens to be not a translation, but the original Hebrew and Greek. It was written in. Well, she's saying that, that we don't have the Word of God. She's saying that only when God gave the originals, that's the Word of God. When it was written in Hebrew and Greek, when God gave it to Moses on the Mount of Sinai, and when He gave it to the, um, John on the island of Patmos, that's the only time that we ever had God's Word. Well, that's not true. God has said it, that He has preserved His Word from this generation forever. She, she is deceived. This is what a lot of people are deceived about saying, well, we don't have it today in the English language. That's not true. She says every translation falls short be, because that's simple, the nature of translation. Every translation, every book that we have up here, perversion of God's Word, and everyone out there in the bookstores today, she says every one of them falls short of what the Word of God is. What she's saying is, no one has the Word of God. No one can tell you what the Word of God is because no one has it. Because the fact is, we don't have the originals today. If someone says, well, the Hebrew and the Greek is the original, and it's in the Septuagint, it's in the Texas Receptus, it's in, it's in, it's in uh, the Vatican, or the Sinaiticatus, that's not true. That's not true. The fact is, no one today has an original that God wrote, that Paul wrote. No one. So what this lady is saying, and what people like James White, and people like him that deny the Word of God, they will say, we really don't have the Word of God. Every translation falls short. That's why they always have to be updated. That's why James White and the New American Standard Bible, they just update it. Uh, because they never get it right, and they're never going to get it right. That's why they're coming out with a new NIV because the, the, the man who, who put it out is stated in, uh, in the sword of the Lord saying, we're going to get it right this time. That means for all the millions and millions of copies that they produced and sent out, was it right? That's what he's insinuating. Even this young uh, person is saying every translation falls short. She don't know, they don't know what the Word of God is. And when you don't know what the Word of God is, that leaves it open for man to come up with his own decision and determine what's right and what's wrong. But my friend, there's something today that has to tell us the final authority. Something has to be solid written in God's Word. And this is what we have today in the King James Version. You know, it goes on to say, secondly, translation techniques improve over time, so it's logical to assume that more recent translations are more accurate. That's a lie straight out of hell. She's saying, oh, the more... Newer the translations that we get better translation techniques. No, that's we don't get better translation techniques. What we get is more people with corrupt minds. We get more people like Bruce Metzer and Westcott Hort. We get people like James White and people that follow his line of thinking 
into thinking that we have a higher, it's called higher criticism. The fact is, we don't have better translators than we did back then in the King James or before that. But that's a popular lie that is spread throughout the Christian churches. And then it goes on to say the King James Version was also translated in part by William Shakespeare. Um, by William Shakespeare. That's hogwash. He was not a translator. He was not on the uh, the board of uh, the translators that translated the King James Version in, in 1611. He wasn't on there. This this person is so far deceived into taking something and saying, oh, even even Shakespeare was part of the translation team and he was a, a, a faithful man. We can't put no trust in that. But she's so wrong. Or he's so wrong. I'm going to keep saying she for some strange reason. And then, it says, you seem to have entered into a logical fallacy. Yeah, the Bible's just a fallacy. Just a fallacy. It's like a fable. That's what they believe. Being your assumption that the King James Version is the only true Scripture. It is the only true Scripture. That's not a fallacy. That's not a fable. That's not a fairy tale. That's a truth. And people don't want to believe it. Because if they believe this book, if they believe this is the, the Word of God, then they have to seriously consider what does it say? What does it say about my soul? What does it say about how I live? What does it say about how I dress? How does it say about how, uh, who I associate with? How does it, uh, what does it say about how I live my life and how I raise my kids and how I treat my wife and how I treat my husband? Then you have to look at it with some respect and some fear. But that day we don't, we don't want any of that because every translation they say is corrupt. Jesus talked continually, she's, uh, this person said, uh, about love and how important that was. And it is true. Jesus did say a lot about love. We don't deny that. And we go out and we knock on doors and we um, tell people about Jesus and the love of Christ. And we tell them that Jesus died on Calvary for their sins. And they don't have to go to hell, but they can go to heaven because of what Christ has done for them. And we'll tell them about Christ's love. But Jesus said, not only did he not say uh, that the greatest commandment of these is, is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. He also said, if you love me, keep my commandments. See, the philosophy of the world is just preach love. Just preach love. Love, 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 love. And there's nothing wrong with preaching the love of Christ. And we should preach the love of Christ. And we do preach the love of Christ. But there's more to this book than just Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul and so forth. There's more to it than that. If that was all we needed, God would only give us one verse of Scripture. What about all the rest of this that tells us how to live and tells us how to act and tells us how to talk and tells us how to think and it tells us everything to do as a Christian. But people don't want to do that. He said, if you do love me, then you'll obey these other commandments. That's how you show God that you do love him. Right. But people don't want to do that part. They just want to go out and lovey dovey everybody and, 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 and do all that kind of thing, but they don't want to obey the commandments. But he said in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you want to show God that you love him, obey him. That's what he says. And all through Scripture, you can see where God tells us to love God. Yes. But he also tells us, about our hair. He also tells us what to drink and what not to drink. He also tells us how, how to walk a Christian life. He tells us about this tongue and what to do with it. He tells us it's okay to judge someone if it's based on God's Word. All kind of things in this book it tells us. But a lot of people want to ignore all that and just say, let's just love the world. Let's just love the world. And we should love the world. Christ loved the world. But that don't mean we throw doctrine out the door. This person goes on and says, Jesus said that I am the way, and she quotes a perversion. Right? Yeah, I don't know why I keep thinking this is a lady. But anyway, it's a gentleman. It says, Jesus said, and, and this is a misquote, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's not what the verse says. In John 14, 6, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. That's what it says. So it, means that it says the same thing. Says the same thing. No, no. Don't right. say the same thing. That's what they want, want to tell you. And they say I'm ignorant because I misspell a word like October. <laughs> it's not the same thing. You can, all these perversions of God's word, they say all kind of things different. But yet they'll tell me, I don't know what I'm talking about, even though they all say the same thing. Such as this book. We'll just pick up one and read one. John 14, 6. Let's just read it. See what it says. 
John 14, 6. Didn't plan to do this, we'll just do it. It says, Jesus told them, or told him, I am the way, yes, and the truth, and the life. No one can get to the Father except by, by means of me. That ain't the same thing. But right. some people, some people will tell me that's the same thing. That ain't the same thing. That's garbage. Right. That's garbage. But some people are just stuck in the mud. And he goes on to say, this means, and it's this person, this guy, interprets scripture and says, this means. Now tell me what this is what you think the Bible says when it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. She, th this guy says, this means that your, your or my translation of the Bible isn't important. That's what th this person is saying that verse means. That we can just throw our Bible in the trash can. We can take all these and they don't mean nothing either. That's what that person just said. I'll read it again. I'll read it the way that, that they wrote it. It says, Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. End of that perversion. This means that your Bible or my translation of the Bible isn't important. And that's what they get from their garbage. That ain't what John 14, 6 is teaching. That a translation of God's Word is not important. But yet this person seems to think the only thing, the next part says Jesus is the only thing that is important. Yeah, His Word's not important. He came to die on Calvary, and if you look at the Lord's Prayer in John chapter 17, it tells us that I have given them my Word. That's why He came to give us His Word as well as to die for our sins. It wasn't to leave us without His Word. But this person seems to think God's Word, no matter what translation it is, it ain't important. The only thing that's important is that Jesus is the only thing important. That's what it says. It goes on to say, you are strapping yourself to the gospel. Well, praise God. I'm proud to say that I'm strapping myself to the Word of God. Hey. I'm proud of saying that. This person is strapping their self to popular opinion. Humanistic uh, philosophy. And higher criticism. It says, no one is going to find what you do attractive. Well, praise God. What I'm doing, I ain't trying to be attractive. I'm not trying to be popular. I'm not trying to to uh, uh, to um, scratch anybody's back and tickle anybody's ears. Like the Bible says in the last days, there will be people coming. They'll want uh, teachers that will itch their ears and, and, and soothe them and make them feel good and preach a positive message. Because nobody no longer wants to hear about hell. Nobody wants to hear someone tell you what the Bible says. They're just interested in how they feel and what they want to do so they can live their life any old kind of way they want. That's what the world wants. The Bible says, love not the world. These are the right. things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. This person goes on to say, you should let people choose the translation that speaks to them the most. They're all about the same in accuracy. Now she just said that we don't need them. Every translation has errors. Every one of them, she said, or him, Every translation has errors. Then she went as far to uh, this person went as far to say that the Bible isn't important. It don't matter difference what translation. And now all of a sudden, this person is defending what they just tore down and tore up and said it's not important. Everyone has errors, but we should let people choose which one. Well, why do they need to choose one? Because it ain't correct according to this person. It don't matter no difference what translation you use. And this newsletter or email I got is typical of the thousands that I've received. They're all pretty much the same. Then it goes on to say, the important part is that you get out there into the world and say, quote, hey look guys, there is this guy named Jesus. This guy named Jesus. That's what new translations teach you. This guy named Jesus. He ain't just some guy named Jesus. He's the Son of God. Right. He's a, a Savior of this world. Hey. He ain't some guy named Jesus. But that's what the New Translation teaches. 
Then he goes on to say, this is regardless of anything, regardless of race, gender, Bible translation, type of music, listen to, or anything else you can think of, Jesus accepts everyone and anyone. No requirements. Just that they believe in Him and seek a closer relationship with Him. No, God does require something. He requires repentance. He requires repentance. The salvation that people teach today in their positive little thinking is just, come, why don't you experience Christ? Won't you come experience something? That's their philosophy. Won't you come experience something? Won't you just come forward and, 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 and try Jesus? Haven't you seen the bumper sticker? Try Jesus. That's garbage. You don't try Jesus and take him on and off like a pair of shoes. And, and if he don't fit right, you kick him off and throw him in the trash can. That's what the world teaches. He's not a pair of loafers that you try on and, try and kick off. He is the Son of God yes. and He has invited you to, to, to accept Him as His Savior. But we have people today that don't accept Him. We have people that reject Him and reject His Word. Today there is a battle. There's always been a battle over God's Word. There's always been a battle. People not standing for what's right. People not standing for truth. Over in Ezekiel chapter 22, here we got there now in verse 26, and I'll tell you where the problem is. The problem stands with the preachers. The problem don't stand with people in the chairs and the pews. The problem stands with preachers today. It says, her priest. That's another word for preachers, prophets, have violated my law. What's God's law? Right here, His word. They have violated my law. What have they done? They have profaned my holy thing. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they shown difference between the unclean and the clean. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbath, and I have profaned among them. And then, in verse 28, the end of uh, verse 28, uh, we'll read the whole verse, and her prophets have dabbed up them in untempered mortar, seeing vanity and uh, di divi um, I'm sorry, divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. Well, that's what we have in this garbage here. Is that, this is what God has said. But God hadn't said anything like this. God didn't take out the word begotten. No, He didn't do that. But that's what they say. Thus saith the Lord God. And He said, I didn't say that garbage. Look over in verse 30. And I sought for a man among them. And that should make up the hedge. And stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Those verses up there in verse 26, it says, My priests, my preachers today, and that's the problem today in pulpits across this land. You know, we got a lot of independent fundamental Baptist people here in this county. We have several preachers that we contacted. You know, where are they at tonight? Are they out trick-or-treating? Are they out getting little pieces of candy for their little kids? Are they having their little trunk or treats? But where are the people that are standing for God's Word today? Yeah. They say they believe in the King James Version, but where are they at? I don't care who they are. I ain't going to name no names, but I will tell you this. Where are they at? That's what I like to know. They have plenty of opportunity. None of them actually call me and said, you know, uh, Brother Mark, um, I, we're not going to be able to make it. we got other plans. we got other things that we do every year. But boy, we stand behind you. But boy, I had hundreds and hundreds of people to contact me all across this country and across this nation and across this world to contact me by email and phone and letters to say, boy, we stand with you. We stand with the King James Version. We're right there with you, and we're going to be right there with you next year as I've already talked with them. Hey, I tell you what, where are the preachers? Where are the preachers that stand for God's Word anymore? They don't make a difference, and this is their problem. And this is what God said. They don't put a difference no more between the holy and the profane. Neither have they shown a difference between the unclean and the clean. we got preachers today They don't make a difference between ungodly music and, God, uh, uh, and godly music. Right. They don't make a difference between the contemporary uh, Christian music and God's uh, music. They don't make a difference. They allow that garbage to come into their church. They make no difference at all. They don't make no difference in how uh, people are supposed to be modest, man and woman. Supposed to be modest. They don't make no difference in that. They don't yeah. care. They don't allow anybody to come up to the um, to the choir loft and sing. It don't make no difference if they have dress. Because there ain't no difference. They make no difference between the holy and the unholy. Between the clean and the unclean. They make no difference in the drinking and the friends. They don't care because they have violated God's Word. They have violated God's Word because they have not 
preached the word of God. They have not stood for what's right. They have not stood in the gap, as it says in verse 30. They have not made up their heads. Instead, they've stepped out of line. Instead of fighting for Jesus, instead of fighting for what's right, instead of fighting for God's word, they've stepped out of line. Right. Now there's a gap in the hedge. They have violated God's word. Because they'll take some garbage like this, or some so-called word of God, the revised standard version, and say... This is God's word. This is what God has said. And he said right there, the Lord hath not spoken that. This is not God's word. Not at all. This is garbage. This is not God's word. And that's what they'll tell you. Oh, we're not going to, we don't want to offend nobody. They see, they're interested more in their paycheck and their long standing um, position in the community before they stand on God's word. Right. This is garbage. This is not what God has spoke. This is not it. But yet they have not made a difference because they will not stand in the pulpits today, the preachers that cross this land, and take a stand and say there is a difference between God's Word and man's Word. Yeah. There is a big difference. But they don't want to tell you that. They don't want to tell you that. Yeah. Turn over to, I'm going to show you one example. Isaiah chapter 14. Any person in elementary school could tell you probably what this is talking about. But people that don't believe God's Word, that doubt God's Word, that question God's Word, they don't understand it. They'll question it. In verse 12, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, someone tell me who this is talking about as soon as you know. I don't care who it is. Anybody. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Satan. He's talking about Satan. Satan. That's plain as day. But you know, you know what they do in the new uh, the new versions? Do you know what they do in the NIV in this so-called James White uh, uh, book that he wrote, the NASB, or was it part of? They take the word Lucifer and take it out, and they call him the morning star. The morning star. That's garbage. You know what the morning star is? Can someone tell me who the morning star is? Jesus. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the morning star. Yeah. Oh, in the book of Revelation it says what? I am the bright and morning star. Look at um, Revelation chapter 22. I ain't making this up. Revelation 22 verse 16. Right before uh, he gives the warning about adding to God's word and taking away from God's word. It says, I, Jesus, in verse 16, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. That's what Jesus said of himself. But yet we got new translators that's supposed to be this new modern translation thing like this guy just told us. And saying, oh, they're, they're more advanced. They, they have better techniques and they're better translators. And they know what they're talking about. No, they don't know what they're talking about. No, what they have done is um, committed to blasphemy and call it wow. Jesus Christ. Satan is what they've do, done. You look at some of the lexicons today. You look at some of the concordance today. You know what? You won't find the word Lucifer in there. They've taken it out. You know why? Because it's not in, the, in there. Because it says refer to the morning star. Refer to the morning star. Lucifer is not a morning star. He's Satan. He's the devil. But the world wants us to think he's the morning star. That is not the same thing. To put in there to say, oh, how they're fallen from heaven. Oh, morning star. That is not the same thing as old Lucifer. No. That is not the same thing. But they'll lie to you and they'll tell you, oh, it says the same thing. It's telling the same story. It's not telling the same story. It doesn't mean the same thing. Right. But that's what they'll tell you. That's what they'll tell you. Other places? I'll just look at, look at, turn over to Mark. Turn over to Mark. Chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. I'm going to show you a couple of these. Mark chapter 9, verse 46. It says in the King James Version, Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Now that's a very important verse, talking about hell. Because that says that a person is not going to be annihilated, that they're just not going to um, die and end up in the ground. But it says their worm dies not. Their, their bodies, their soul is going to live for all eternity and the fire will never be quenched. It will never be satisfied. That's a very important verse. But if you turn to the NIV, did you know that verse isn't even in there? It's gone. 
They just skip it. They go from verse 45 to 47. It's not even in there. It's not even a mention in there. Just skip a verse. They don't know how to count. They complain about you spelling October. They can't even count from 45, 46, and 47. These are translators that are supposed to know Hebrew and Greek, though, but they can't count. But that's what they say. Look at verse 44. Very important. Um, I just said that. Verse 46. Oh, I'm sorry, verse 44. Same verse. Did you know that verse is gone too? They skipped it. It's gone. It's not in the NIV. Look at um, Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6, verse 11. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you, when you depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. All of that's gone. The only part they have is, Verily I say unto you, and it's not even these words, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment, and so forth. I believe I got that right. The first part of that verse is gone. In the NIV. Look at Romans 8.1. You probably quote this one, but look over at Romans 8.1. But they'll tell you there's no changes. That there's no difference. But they lie to you. Let's see if I can just find any of them. Let's see. Do we have one that... We'll see. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get up. New King James. New Testament. Everyday Bible. On the bottom. But Mark... One. There's a piece of garbage. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Romans 8 1. Romans 8 1. Romans 8 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. No. What does it leave out? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. They just leave that part out. It's gone. Why is that, I wonder? I wonder. Look over at Acts 2.27. We'll read it right from this garbage. Acts 2.27. In perversions. Let me turn over here. I'll read it from what God says, and then we'll read what the scholars say. Acts 2.27. I think that's right. God said, Because thou wilt not lead my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Now let's see what the scholars say. I'm on the wrong page still. 2.27. Because you will not abandon me to the grave. There's a big difference in the grave and hell, isn't there? Right. You know that you know what this is teaching? That you just die and go to a grave. That after life, there is no afterlife. There is no heaven and hell. You just go to the grave and decay. That's what they're teaching with this NIV. And they say it says the same thing. It don't say the same thing. The grave is not the same thing as hell. More oh, garbage. That's garbage, folks. Right. Just garbage. This is God's Word. Hey. It's accurate in all points. Somebody says, oh, there's a lot of mistakes in there. No mistakes in here. No. Only to the Bible doubter. Only to the person who questioned God's Word is there problems with it. That's the only person. But the fact is, there is no mistakes in here. A lot of people, they don't understand that. They don't believe it. And that's okay. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, 7, 10. 2 Corinthians 5.17 One of the verses that we've memorized since we've been here. I think this is right. Here's the NAB it says. Well, we'll read God's Word first. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Listen to this garbage. The old order is gone and a new order has already begun. What is that? 
That is not God's word. It's not even close. I understand some are close, and I'll give you that. But that's not even close. It's not even talking about the same thing. And to replace the word hell for grave ain't close. It's not even close. What we have today is modern translators that don't believe God's Word to begin with. And they might have believed God's Word when they went off to college and seminary years ago. When I went off to college and seminary, I believed this book from cover to cover and I believed everything in it. I never questioned it. Not one time did I say, I wonder what's wrong in here. I wonder if I can find something. Boy, I just believed it. I got off to college at Tennessee Temple University back in 84 and 85 and 86 and 87. And you know what? First thing Fred Appleman started doing, who helped put together that garbage, the NIV, he began to put in my mind, plant seeds in my mind, that that King James Version isn't God's Word. He began to plant little seeds to tell me, is that really what God said? That's the same thing that Satan said in Genesis chapter 3. Yea, hath God said. That's what he did. I began to question that, began to question it. And finally I got founded on God's Word, and I knew that he was a liar, and all those who believed like him were liars. And I just stand on this book. I might not be able to explain everything. But the Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. And I just trust God. And I just believe by faith that this is God's Word. And I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what scholar they are. I don't care how much Hebrew and Greek they know. I don't care how much Latin or Aramaic they know. I believe God's Word. And God's Word is greater than man. Hey. The Bible says, let every man be a liar. Let every man be a liar. But God, He's true. His Word is truth. There is no error in it. That's what God said that He would preserve, and He has preserved it through the Texas Receptus, not through the um, the, the the Latin Vulgate. He had um, um, preserve it through the Vaticanus. He had um, um, preserve it through the uh, other um, Catholic um, Sinaiticus. He had preserved it through many of that garbage. They say, well, the older manuscripts are, are there with the Vaticanus and the Sinaiticus, the A and B manuscripts. That is true. They are older. There are a couple of older ones. But I'll tell you what. When you look at them, those that have looked at them, like David Oves Fuller and John Burgon and people of that statue and, and uh, um, have looked at those, and there's big portions just taken out, scratched out, erased, removed. Why is that, I wonder? Because hmm, they didn't like what it said. The same thing they're doing today. They're taking it away and they're adding to it and changing it and translating it any old kind of thing they want. Yeah. Whereas the Texas Receptus is complete. It's complete. It's not quite as old, but it's complete. There's no adding and subtracting. There is no erasing. And plus there's 5,700 manuscripts that back up this book. And there's 44 or 45 that back up this garbage. And they say this is more accurate because it's based on 44 manuscripts instead of 5,700. That's garbage. That's a lie. Try. It's a lie. Satan's still doing the same thing he did some 6,000 years ago when he said, Yea, hath God said. That's what everybody's upset about because I'm going to destroy their garbage. And I'm going to destroy more of this next year. I'm going to destroy a lot more. I can get other people involved around the country to destroy garbage around this world. We've already talked with some people. They've already said, man, that's great. We're going to hop on board. We just, and we're going to destroy garbage in our country. We're going to destroy garbage in our state and in our city. So I believe that's why God has had this to spread personally. I believe that's the reason. In just a minute, we're going to begin to destroy this garbage. We're going to tear it up. We're not going to burn anything. We're not going to break any laws. The Bible says to obey those who are in authority over you. That, that we should do what's right according to our laws as long as they don't tell us to break God's Word. And I don't care particularly how to destroy it as long as it's destroyed. Fire, burning, you know, that's fine. But if we can't burn it, that's fine. I ain't got a problem with that. We'll tear it up and rip it up. I don't have a problem with that either. As long as the garbage is destroyed. A lot of people will tell you, well, you know, this stuff, it contains some truth. And I, I, I'll be the first to say, yeah, there's some truth in here. There is some truth in here. 
I, I won't deny that. A lot of people have wrote me and say, hey, I got saved using it. You know what I think? I believe God can use that. He used um, a jackass to talk with Balaam to preach God's Word to him. I believe he can use garbage. God can use anything he wants. But the fact is, God didn't author this stuff. He didn't inspire it. And he did preserve it. And it's written by man and heretics that don't believe in the deity of Christ, that question God's Word, that add to it and take away and God says they have a curse on them. And therefore, I don't want nothing of it. Don't want nothing of it. Well, we're going to close in prayer. And then we're going to... Don't do anything about it. My dear Heavenly Father, we thank the Lord for this night. We thank the Lord for your precious word. We thank you to God that you have preserved it. I don't care what other scholars say and professors and Hebrew uh, people and Greek people and Latin people. I don't care. Lord, someone has to stand and stand in the gap and say, I will take a stand. It don't make no difference what other preachers are doing. It don't make no difference what the world's doing. Jesus Christ came into this world to die for sinners and they hung Him on a cross. He come to, to take a stand and to say that there's only one God and the Jews hung Him on a cross and nailed Him there because He stood. The, the disciples and the apostles, they stood in the Old Testament doing what you would have them to do, to preach your word, for standing and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, standing for truth, standing for doctrine, and they killed them. They put them on a cross. They put them in boiling oil. They hung them. Any kind of thing they could do to them just to put them out of commission, to quiet them. And all through the ages we've had people that stood for your word, the King James Version, and the Catholic Church put down, put thousands upon thousands upon thousands who stood for the King James Version, who stood and fought and said, this is God's holy word, and they burned them to the stake. And dear God, I pray that you would bless us tonight. I pray to God that you would bless what we're about to do as we get rid of these perversions of thy word. And this garbage that Satan has produced, like rock music, and country music and, and, and all kinds of contemporary Christian music. And these authors are, Lord, that are heretics. We're not saying they're necessarily lost and going to hell. We never said that. But, Lord, they certainly are teaching another doctrine. They certainly are teaching other a gospel. And the, Paul said in Galatians, if they teach any other gospel, let them be accursed. And, Lord, they are accursed because they don't stand for truth. They don't stand for doctrine. And Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3, it says... No other doctrine. He was telling the young preacher, don't have no other doctrine. Whereas we got preachers today, the Lord, that are just standing for nothing. Boy, they just give in to everything and anybody because they're afraid to stand. They don't have, have no backbone to do what's right. I pray the Lord for our country. I pray to God that we would, that you would bless it. I pray to God that you'd bring a, a, mul a multitude of people that will stand, that will um, watch our um, step of faith to God and step with us and go with us next year and do the same thing. I pray the Lord that you bless us, I pray, in all we do. And we ask these things in Jesus' name because you're worthy. Amen. Amen.